Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this talk. So, yeah, uh, I did this talk uh, it, uh, last year end at uh, Bogota DevCon, and now we're at like June 2023. I feel like this talk is a little bit uh, late. Like after a uh, half a month, like we now have like Nova, we have like all these new proving systems and like new languages. And, and but I, I feel like there, there's still a need to talk about Hello 2 because if you want to contribute to um, uh, ZKVM or like some uh, low level language uh, implementation, uh, some knowledge about how um, how to works was very helpful, and also um, the new proving systems, uh, Nova, Hyperplong, and um, everything are built uh, on top of how to. Uh, so let's let's begin. Um, so about this talk, I will be uh, talk about some building blocks of the how to circuit, and also the uh, the design mindset uh, for the circuit implementation. Like uh, most of us are not like cryptographers, most of us are developers. We're building applications, and um, we usually write uh, a programming language like uh, Python, JavaScript, Rust. Um, but uh, Hello Two is uh, a very different beast, and it, it requires different mindset and thinking uh, about uh, to to write your. Uh, present uh, application, and so there might be some challenges, and I hope it, uh, some some of uh, our uh, tricks and tips can help you uh, navigate through, through this. And uh, about me, uh, I've been working on ZKVN uh, community version uh, in PSE for, for two years, and uh, the, the goal is to build, uh, uh, build a, a L1 uh, as Execution layer proof, and so so uh, our goal is not uh, for for zk rollup, and we've been working with uh, uh, Squirrel and Tyco, and they're building zk rollups, and we uh, we build the whole project on top of Hello Two, and uh, a quick reminder that we uh, our project is uh, licensed in MIT and Apache uh, 2.0, so feel free to uh, use it, fork it, modify it. Do whatever you would like to do. So uh, a little bit primer on the uh, zk proving. So we have uh, two parties, uh, one prover and one verifier. They agreed on some algorithms, and prover at the proving time uh, they can uh, claim they have some inputs and uh, derive to some outputs, and. Uh, the verifier can uh, read the input, output, and the proof, and then convince that the output is correct without rerunning the program again. And uh, that's uh, that's how uh, zk proof allows us to uh, compress the computation, or you can hide some information in the computations, and uh, you can let the uh, uh, verifier with low computation powers to to verify that computation, and let's un uh, unwrap this a little bit. So uh, we have uh, two uh, scenarios: one is setup time, and one is uh, proving time. So setup time, uh, the prover and the verifier agreed on some algorithm. And you, the developer, write that algorithm and express in this grid, in, in this weird uh, Sudoku game, like um, you express that algorithm in that grid. And then we uh, will turn that grid uh, in terms of uh, verifying key and proving key uh, and distribute, distribute them to the prover and the verifier. Then at a proving time, uh, the prover can uh, can run that algorithm, can uh, field in some inputs, all the middle computation traces and the outputs, and then the prover will create a proof and then send to the verifier. And 
the prover use the proving key to generate a proof, and the verifier will use the verifying key to verify the proof and uh, determine the proof is valid or not. Now, um, the circuit dev developers have uh, very different brand, uh, brands. So usually as a normal developer, we work with languages like Python. Uh, we define uh, our computation in variables. Uh, we might uh, determine on some conditions and then uh, branch our programs into different parts, we uh, handle our computation in, in terms of CPU runtimes. But as a circuit developer, you are working with the computation traces, which is the, uh, the input, all the intermediate values and the outputs, and they're uh, laid out as, the, uh, as the, the, the values. And then we, uh, what we design is a set of uh, mathematical constraints and then uh, to determine if these traces are valid or not. So I would say there are three elements in the, uh, in the circuit developing. One is the computation trace, the other are constraints, and the third one, like I hope this can go away soon, like is arithmetization. So uh, what is the computation trace? It's step-by-step uh, -step values. Uh, uh, to derive the computation from the inputs to the output. Uh, for example, if I want you to uh, count like uh, like one like one like a, a two two numbers multiplication with millions, and you might uh, like use your textbook algorithm and write all the uh, computations, and those middle values are are are, are your computation traces. And for the constraints, like we define like what's the valid path of the computation uh, trace. Like uh, there are some uh, valid value you can fill in this Sudoku board, and there are invalid values. So if we uh, over constrain or under constraints, we will introduce some bugs. Um, if we constrain too much, then there are some valid computation we're not, uh, the prover is not able to perform, and then we'll have a completeness bug. And if we under constraints, then the prover uh, can convince um, the verifier some false statements, then that's a soundness bug, very serious. And the last one is the arithmetization. Like we have to express those uh, computation traces in numbers and the constraints in, in uh, math and equations. So those are the difficult part. So let's uh, unwrap these uh, three elements one by one. The first one is uh, we want to express the computation trace into, um, in, uh, into some formats that uh, the computer can uh, parse and understand so first, uh, we have a grid like a uh, Sudoku board. We organize it as some columns and some rows. And in, uh, in each cell, you can fill in a number. Uh, this number is a finite field element. Uh, usually, uh, you can think of it as an integer less than p, uh, p a number. Uh, for example, if this p is 3, then um, you you can input 0, 1, 2, but if you, uh, if you need to perform some like uh, additions and multiplications, for example, 2 plus 2, then uh, this, uh, you usually get 4, but like uh, since we uh, have this like uh, wrap over uh, property, then um, it will become 1. So everything uh, in, the, in the cell is under module uh, of arithmetics. And P is usually a very, very big number. It's 254 bits. Uh, that usually, that, that's very uh, enough for, for most of applications. But like, for example, if you are dealing with uh, EVM words, with, which is uh, 256 bits, then you have to split the word into like uh, two, two parts, the high parts or low parts, so that it doesn't overflow. Um, so for the rows, um, the rows are uh, fixed height. Uh, usually it's uh, 2 to the 16 um, 
or 20 rows, like um, you, uh, the, the space is free, but it's capped. And uh, you, you can like, feel free to use as, much row, as many rows as possible, but uh, you are not able to, to increase it to uh, too, too many rows. And for the columns, uh, you are free to add many columns with some additional cost for approval and verifiers. So, um, yes. So, so, so this is the grid uh, that we can lay out of computation traces. And now, like, um, like we we now need to define the. Uh, there are different types of columns. A column is a polynomial, and like it uh, kind of compress the all the the value in that. Uh, in the columns and into a uh, elliptic curve element, and uh, but there there uh, there are some like different types of columns uh, we need to pay attention to. First one is the uh, fixed fixed column, and this one uh, is uh, created at a setup time. You assign the value at a setup time. It's visible to the verifier and also to the prover. You can think it as part of the uh, circuit constraint. Yeah, the the, uh, the printed local values that uh, it, it must, you know, must uh, satisfy. And the other column is the advice column. Uh, this is uh, the the prover assigns value in these cells in the uh, proving time. So uh, usually uh, the actual value is only visible to the prover, and um, the verifier only has access to the uh, commitment or the curve element of that column, but they, they don't see the actual values in there. And the, uh, so this is visible to prover and, and determined at the proving time. And the last one is the instance column. Uh, this is when you have some public inputs and then you want to share uh, between like uh, prover and verifier, for example, the, uh, the, the, uh, the Merkle rule of uh, tornado cache. And uh, you, you put this value in the in instance column. And this is uh, also determine the probing time and visible to verifier. So uh, let's uh, give a recap. Um, so at the proving time, we uh, filled a grid with the uh, uh, prover, prover values. And the prover used the proving key to turn this grid into a grid of computation traces into a, a snark proof, and then sent to the verifier. And the verifier using a varying key, uh, uh, the verifier sees the proofs and all, all the columns and, and, and uh, the, the values visible to them and uh, verifying the proof with them. Now, um, we've uh, talked about the computation traces. Now, uh, we, we, uh, we can talk about how, to, how do we express uh, constraints uh, in, in Halo 2. So constraints define uh, what computation traces are valid, and they, uh, they, they are defined by relative uh, positions. So usually you have a selector that it, uh, that uh, used to uh, enable or disable a constraint, and then uh, this selector is a, a fixed column, and you have an expression like uh, the equation there. Uh, it, it says the selector times a minus b minus b uh, next equals to zero, and uh, and this cells you can. You can put it in any uh, relative uh, positions. You can put it in like 20 rows later, or, or like three rows later, but or, or like some columns on the right, columns on the left, but they, they have to be uh, in relative position. So uh, we can give an example to, to show that. Uh, for example, this is uh, a Fibonacci circuit. Uh, so we want to uh, prove that uh, the nth term of the Fibonacci numbers, um, uh, for example, one, one, two, three, five, and we can lay out this computation trace and the inter intermediate values in this grid, and we have um, the y one. Oh, that, yeah, sorry, the y one should be the fixed column. I, I did the wrong coloring, and 
so, and I, uh, so we define the uh, gate, the gate is a constraint. Uh, it has the uh, selectors uh, on the left, and then left value, right value, and the sum. And then they must satisfy the equation. Uh, if the selector is on, then left plus right uh, minus sum equals to zero. Then uh, we check it row by row. Like this one, selector is on, and so it must satisfy the right equation. And then uh, one plus one minus two equals to zero. And this uh, gate will scan through uh, the whole rows. And then um, if it's on, then uh, the constraint must be uh, satisfied. And uh, scan down, scan down uh, to the last uh, last row. The selector is disabled, so uh, the the right, the left, right, and sum they, they doesn't have to satisfy this expression. Um, so this is another way you can uh, write your constraint. We save one column and move the uh, constraint cells to the uh, to the right next. And then uh, we can do the scanning and, and check that uh, this, uh, this trace is actually valid. Uh, so there are uh, three, type, uh, three types of checks in Halo 2. So one is using the gate to constrain the computation trace. Uh, the other one is the uh, equality, e equality checks. So equality checks can let you glue two cells together, uh, but they are defined in absolute position. So for example, we can glue this uh, 10 to the 10, um, 10 to the 10 uh, with, uh, with this copy constraint, also the 100 to the 100 uh, with the, uh, with the co copy constraint. So the, when they are glued, the, the, self, uh, the value in the cell must equal to each other. And yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, and and there's also a, a lookup constraint, but I I didn't include it here um, uh, because that includes some complexity. Um, yeah, and as uh, we're uh, the snark is a, a verifying uh, computation uh, technique. And so we're designing some like uh, can't be can't be evil applications, and to do that we must assume that our actors Pura is always evil. They they are able to do uh, anything evil, and we can uh, we must argue that if they they are evil, we can prevent them from doing evil things. So, uh, so that's the. That's all the uh, rule we have in Halo 2. Now we can uh, look in some tricks. The first uh, trick is, of, uh, of course, uh, limiting what kind of uh, values you can input in a cell. So uh, the, the simplest one is to uh, multiply that. Uh, the, for example, you, you only allow the value 1 and 2 and 3 inside a cell. Then if that cell is x, and then you, you create an expression x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 equals to value. So if you input value 3, it satisfies the uh, expression. Uh, 2 is not satisfied, but 100 uh, does not satisfy the expression. The output is not 0. Uh, 0 does not satisfy the expression, too. Uh, so, yep, that's limiting the cell of options. Now, um, uh, the, the other trick is to convert uh, if else. So, in, in, in your application, if else is very uh, basic, uh, basic building blocks uh, for your application. Uh, uh, let's give an example like you have an algorithm, uh, FO. And then you have two inputs, A and B, and another input uh, uh, variable happy. If it's uh, happy, then we uh, perform addition. 
If it's not happy, then we perform multiplication. And for this uh, circuit, we uh, laid out some computation traces, and we um, input a computation trace to the, to the grid, and then we define some uh, copy constraints um, so that, uh, let's say we have A is 5 and B is 6, uh, happy is 1 or 0, and uh, the output uh, uh, is uh, 11 if happy is 1, and if it's 0, then the output is 30. So we can, uh, define, the, we can define the expression like this. Um, so you have happy times uh, A plus B, 1 times uh, happy uh, is uh, A multiplied by B, and uh, minus output uh, uh, must be equal to zero. And if, uh, as you can see, if the happy is one, then uh, the left constraint is enabled, and the right one, the eighth multiplied by b, is uh, disabled. And uh, if happy is zero, then uh, the left one is disabled, and the right one is enabled. Uh, uh, but there's a small problem in uh, this uh, equation. Um, do anyone see any, any problem? Okay, I'll get to the point. Uh, so uh, the prover can uh, witness uh, the, the value happy to, the, uh, to three, so that uh, it, gets a, uh, it gets a very invalid output of minus 27 that you cannot ever derive from that algorithm. And why is that? Because we didn't constrain the possible value for happy. Happy is a, a Boolean value, so we need to add another constraint to constrain happy to be 0 or 1. Okay. Now, uh, we have uh, if-else, and we convert it to the uh, math if expressions. Now, uh, we can come uh, converting some uh, for loops. Um, for a simple for loop, if the uh, if the number of loop is deterministic, then you can just uh, lay out the uh, computation traces and 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 make it uh, make it a fixed fixed number um, of oh, sorry fixed number of grids. Uh, so this this is very easy, but uh, if the uh, if the range like if 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 you don't know how many how many uh, loops or like this uh, this number of loops is determined by proving time, then we have a problem. Like we cannot um, we cannot glue them in uh, with the copy constraints. Uh, we don't know how how big uh, the, the the table is. So. Uh, so what we have to do here, um, um, so so one one uh, one principle is that like uh, we are not able to prove uh, infinite loops. Like there's only your uh, when you determine number of columns of your circuit, there's only so many computations you can prove. It, it, it's a fixed amount. It it it's it, it's capped. So we're not able to prove infinite uh, number of uh, computations. Um, so, so we have to define the max possible of n. And then uh, for, um, so, um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, so, so one strategy to do this is to, um, to to have a so a one one strategy to have a a, a dynamic uh, input is, is to uh, is to let the prover witness the uh, number of n and uh, define it as uh, uh, define it as a variable uh, r and then uh, but uh, if we don't uh, limit the, uh, the the number of uh, the R, the uh, prover can uh, witness the uh, wrong value and then uh, give you a wrong output. Um, so uh, we can 
we can see some uh, valid com how valid computation traits like. Um, so uh, the the left one uh, is like if the n is zero, then we should have selectors of zero. But if the n is three, then then we should have uh, three uh, three of uh, selectors uh, are continuously one and then uh, zero to the end. And the the last one, if the uh, the the n is five, then we should have like five of selectors are uh, enabled, and the last one is zero. And then so we can observe there's a, a state machine here. So if uh, if we start our algorithm, um, we can uh, we can go to the path to to add more add more values, or we could uh, go to the padding uh, no values. But we are not able to go through the padding to the add. So when you um, when when a selector is one, your next one can be one or zero. But once you enter zero. There's no way you can enter to the one again. So, uh, so define a state transition. You can uh, you can make sure this uh, computations always uh, run correctly. There is no way the prover can witness zero one zero one zero one and like uh, mess up your computation uh, in in this algorithm. Um, so yeah, uh, these are a bunch of Details like uh, to add some uh, missing constraint to the to the uh, to, to this algorithm, and uh, the takeaway here is the um, in um, in the in the CPU computation when we do a branch, uh, we we just ignore uh, like if you select one branch in the if else, then you we just ignore the uh, else branch or, or the, the other branch we didn't go, they, they won't be the overhead of your computation. But in the circuit, like um, if we have if else branch, we must leave the space for the uh, prover to, uh, to, to compute them. Because you don't know, and uh, you, you write the program at the same time. But when you're in approving time, you don't know uh, which path the prover will take. So you need to leave the space for the both branches inside the circuit. And uh, the last one, last one trick is uh, we learned in uh, uh, the, this March in the uh, Vietnam residency. We have a, a we, ha we, we have a book camp and. Uh, we realized that, like, if uh, we can express um, our computations in the recursive function, uh, since we are um, verifying a computation trace, uh, we don't have to we don't have to really verify it from the beginning to the end of of the real computation. We can actually verify it from the end to the beginning, as long as the the relationships and the the structure of the computation is correct. So, uh, uh, expressing the 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 function in uh, recursion has some uh, benefits. That it's very easy to argue the correctness uh, of the of the function. Like uh, if you express in for loops or like like. Uh, your normal uh, incremental computation. It's easy to mess up uh, or forget or or, uh, or do it wrong with some variables. But expressing uh, recursions is is very uh, easy to see if it's correct or not. Um, so yeah, I still have uh, 40 seconds. So some takeaway for this talk. Um, so. Yeah, for a challenge for the circuit developers, um, we are doing with computation traces instead of the the, the actual real uh, execution. So we need to uh, flatten the computation path and leave uh, all the space for the bo both uh, uh, both if else branches and all the branches of your computation. And we are working with the uh, math arithmetic instead of bytes. So we have to do, uh, deal with the finite field elements and math equations. And the last one is the 
uh, we are working with the uh, prover that could be uh, evil, so, so we need to prevent them from uh, cheating the computation. We must be careful with the, uh, uh, every possible invalid computation the prover can witness and convince you the wrong output. And some trick is that uh, if we want to limit some, uh, if we want to do the if else branches, then uh, use the uh, this type of uh, equations to do if else branch. And for complicated rules, uh, try to define your application as a state transition and define constraints for them. So, yeah, that's my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.